Hey everyone, it's Paul Bertarelli reporting from the NBAA convention in Las Vegas, Nevada. You know, engines in aviation come along, what, every 50 years or so? Well, not really, but they don't come along very often, and they're even rarer in the turbine and turboprop market. That's why this engine, it's a new model from GE called the ATP, is so interesting. It has improved fuel economics, it's lighter, and what's most interesting about it is that it's going to be built with 3D technology, laser printing. That means that it's going to be a very economical engine to manufacture. We got a detailed drill down on the engine from GE's Paul Corkerly. Just a quick overview, I'm Paul Corkery, I'm responsible for this with GE Aviation. There's a lot of things that are going into this and why we're developing it. Number one, 20% better fuel burn, 33% uh, time between overhauls increased, and we can maintain horsepower at altitude better because of the technology we're putting in here. Not only on the compressor, the higher pressure ratio, 16 to one for variable geometry, also the cool turbine blades. But one thing I really wanted to highlight, Paul, is our additive technology. And I'm just pointing to the exhaust case here. The uniqueness of additive is as we went through this engine, we took about 800 plus parts and, and distilled it down to 12 parts. Why did we do that? What we did was we looked at traditional manufacturing versus additive. And, and we did an analysis on each of those parts where we could maximize the value of additive versus traditional. What we found out is if you look at traditional manufacturing, it works for more standard parts. But if you look at additive, it's more complex parts. So this part, you can see some of the structural components. You can see it's concave. You can see it's a complex part, so it fits nicely with additive. So that's one of the processes we went through. Three things that additive brings on top of that is it helps us reduce our design cycle time. And what I mean by that, normally when you make a change in the development cycle, this is software where you download to the machine, not changing a lot of tooling in the design process and in the manufacturing process. The other thing it does is it helps us on performance and weight. So when we went through, that's how we made an analysis of these parts, we do traditional manufacturing, these parts we do with additive manufacturing. Additive manufacturing, what it is is you end up with a powder. It's 3D printing. You put a powder, you have laser melting technology, so you can build up the part, like I was mentioning here, over time. And what that does is it reduces any waste that you have from the process. Like I mentioned, if you have a design change, we can go back and do that quickly and reprint the part. So that's really some of the key things. The other, when I mentioned reduces some of the byproducts of the manufacturing, we can reduce the weight of the part. And you can see some of the structural components here on how we maximize additive to reduce weight. Well, I think we're just on the beginning of that trajectory. We're, we're 3D printing five different types of materials as we go forward, and that's gonna to continue to expand over time. So it's part of the value. So we look at what material it is, how do we manufacture that material and does it make sense for additives? So I think, you know, right now we're, as I mentioned, we're doing five, but that's going to continue to increase over time. So again, the, the Bliss technology is on the compressor and it's a 16-1 compressor with variable geometry. What Bliss is, is you're actually manufacturing it into, into one piece instead of having the blade separated from the, the shaft itself. So similar to additive where you get one piece, but the technology and the manufacturing process to get to that result is a little bit different. We think we're just on the beginning of the curve here. It's Right now it's one laser to do the melting. That's gonna quickly go to two to four to eight over time. We believe that will help us not only increase the productivity as you move forward, but decrease the cost basis. So like I mentioned, we're just at the cusp of this, Paul, and we think that this, this is gonna continue to grow pretty quickly. Right now we're on the trajectory to run this at the end of the year, that is a key milestone for us. Uh, we're actually pencils down on design, We've, we're running the supply chain, we are putting the engine together, and we will run it by uh, end of 2017, and it will be certified by the end of 2019. Between those two dates, we run a series of engineering and certification testing in six different test cells and several different test engines.